I put all 64 brawlers into a tournament and we're going to find out who the ultimate brawler is. Each round they'll compete in one of six different Olympics events and half of the brawlers will be eliminated every single time. The ultimate brawler is good at dealing damage quickly, which is why we're going to start with the one second damage test. The rules are simple. Brawlers can use any abilities to deal as much damage as possible in one second against a single target. Whichever brawler can deal more damage, we'll move on to the next round. First up is Ash versus Shelly. Now Ash is able to fully charge his rage before his attacks land, but it's still no match for how strong Shelly's supers are and how fast she can actually recharge them. Shelly is the obvious winner and moves on to round two. Next is Mortis versus Dynamite, and in this challenge, Dynamite actually has a leg up against Mortis. In a regular match, Mortis would take out Dynamite, but Dynamite's attacks still almost double the damage that Mortis can do, so Dynamite moves on. Next is Jackie versus Surge, and if Surge can hit just the right spot on the wall, all six of his split shots will hit the boss, so he deals way more damage than Jackie can, even with just one attack. Jackie gets eliminated and Surge moves on. Next is Frank versus Amber and neither one of them can unload all their ammo in time, but Frank's gadget does double the power of one of his attacks, which gives him a solid lead over Amber. So Frank moves on. I've got more to show you, but first I want to give a big thank you to Samsung for sponsoring this video. The Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra has been released and this model, guys, let me tell you, this was made specifically for gamers. Click that link below to check it out now. When I say it's specifically made for gamers, I mean, this is obviously amazing for daily use as well. But with this phone in your hands, you're about to take your gaming experience to a whole new level. I have said this before, but frame rate is incredibly important when you are gaming and it not only has an extremely high frame rate, but also adaptive vision booster, which adapts to the environment that you're playing. So no matter where you are, it's gonna be crisp and smooth. Plus with a 5,000 milliamp hour battery, this thing is gonna last a long time and you can game on it pretty much anywhere you want. And did I mention the phone has its own cooling system? Yes, it does. Plus look at this S Pen. Oh yeah, here we go. I'm writing notes. I'm drawing pictures. I'm doing all sorts of stuff. I mean, just look at the clarity of those squiggles. I'm getting a little bit excited here, but not too excited because this thing is worth being excited for. I don't take a ton of pictures, but my wife absolutely loves it for the pictures. It's so good. So if you feel like your current device is performing is holding you back or you just want the next best upgrade. I highly recommend clicking that link below so you can check out the Galaxy S23 Ultra because it really just doesn't get better than this. And once again, a huge thank you to Samsung for sponsoring this video. Next is Bo versus Janet and all of Bo's minds detonate almost at the same time as when he fires a few regular attacks. Janet doesn't even have enough time to use her gadget or her super, so she gets eliminated and Bo moves on. Next is Sprout versus Griff and this is no competition. Griff instantly starts cycling through his supers and he's able to rack up over 18,000 damage before the boss is destroyed, so Sprout doesn't even come close and Griff moves on. Next is Sam versus Meg, and Meg perfectly times her super so that her mecha is destroyed and her heavy metal star power activates, giving her just enough damage to barely beat Sam out and move on. Next is Crow versus 8-Bit, and 8-Bit can do a lot of damage, but Crow jumps and lands in the center of the boss so that almost all of his daggers and his super hit the boss twice, and despite 8-Bit's projectiles each dealing more damage, Crow has way more damage overall, so 8-Bit gets eliminated and Crow moves on. Next is Terra versus Poco, and Poco is not known for dealing very much damage. He doesn't even have enough time to use his super after three attacks, and Terra is able to time her gadget, super, regular attack, all at the same time so that they deal damage, and uh, clearly Terra moves on to round two. Next is Gale versus Grom. The boss is wide enough for all of Gale's projectiles to actually hit his attack, so his attack does a lot of damage, but Grom's gadget triples the damage of one ammo, and his super on top of that is barely enough damage to eliminate Gale and move on. Next is Rico versus Colt, who both have similar attacks and supers, but Rico fires a lot more projectiles and has a gadget that helps him in this test, so Colt only ends up dealing about half the damage that Rico can, which means that Rico moves on to round two. Next is B versus Chester, and B is pretty straightforward, and she can do a lot of damage, but Chester gets a damage boost from his gadget, and his super lands on the boss while he's unloading his ammo, so even though B hits the boss with her attack, gadget, and super, she still does not come even close close to beating Chester, and Chester moves on. Next is Carl versus Byron, and Carl's super takes way too long to deal all of its damage in this test, while Byron's super and gadget deal almost all of their damage at the same time, meaning that even though Byron typically deals damage over time, he at least can take out Carl in this competition. Next is Edgar versus Lou. Now Lou cannot unload as many shots as Edgar can in one second, and he only gets one small tick of damage from a super, while Edgar gets the entire extra damage thanks to his star power. So Lou gets eliminated, and Edgar moves on. Next is Daryl versus Spike, and Daryl 
Zero can deal a lot of damage, point blank, but Spike's gadget alone deals over 15,000 damage to the boss, so Daryl doesn't even get close to Spike, and Spike moves on. Next is Barley versus Fang. Now, Fang gets a little bit of extra damage from his gadget, plus his attacks and super deal damage way faster than Barley's, since Barley's attacks deal damage over time, so Fang ends up moving on. Next is Bull versus Otis. Bull can unload all three of his attacks and even land a super in the same second, while Otis can't even unload all of his attacks, so Bull easily gets to move to the next round. Next, we have Gus versus Buzz, and I really let brawlers do whatever they can to score highest in this test, because this is the ultimate Olympics. So Gus deals 14,000 damage with just his gadget after stacking all of his ghosts, of course. That is way more than enough to eliminate Buzz and move on to the next round. Next is Rosa versus Piper, and the fastest damage that Piper can deal is just two regular attacks with her ambush star power, and they're so strong that she almost doubles the damage that Rosa can deal in one second, and Piper gets to the next round. Next is Pam versus Colette. Pam's attacks take forever to fully unload, while Colette's super is almost instant because of how close she is to the wall. Colette deals exactly 10,000 damage in one second and moves to the next round. Next, we have Belle versus Mandy. Mandy's super takes so long that she's only able to hit the boss with one attack after using it, but it deals so much damage that she's still able to beat Belle, even with Belle targeting the boss with her super. Next, we have Gray versus Jean, which is actually very close. Gray waits for his grand piano to crash down before unloading its attacks, whereas we have Jean, who can unload all of his attacks, but Gray ends up actually beating Jean by less than 150 damage, so he barely moves on to the next round. Next is BB versus Nita. BB probably uses the environment better than any other brawler in this test by putting the boss between two walls close to each other and firing as many bubble supers as possible. Nita's actually pretty impressive, but BB can deal over 15,000 damage in one second before the boss is destroyed, so she obviously moves on to the next round. Next is Ruffs versus Sandy. Now, Ruffs times his gadget, super, and attack to all land about the same time, while Sandy only has his main attack and a tiny bit of extra damage from his super, so Ruffs makes it to the round two. Next, we have Squeak versus Brock. Now, Brock can deal his damage the fastest by using his super with his more rocket star power, but Squeak can time his super and two of his attacks to blow up at the exact same time, so even though Brock deals good damage, he doesn't even come close to beating Squeak, and Squeak gets to move on. Next is Tick versus Leon. While Tick's mines are still flying through the air, he's able to drop his super so that they all deal damage at this very same second, whereas Leon can't even unload all of his attacks in that time, so Tick actually gets to move on. Next is Eve versus Buster. Now, Eve has to time her hatchlings perfectly perfectly so they all deal one tick of damage within the same exact second while firing as many projectiles as she can. Neither Eve nor Buster are able to unload all of their ammo in time, but Eve does beat Buster by just a little over 100 damage, so she barely makes it into the next round. Next we have Lola versus Mr. P, two spawners. Mr. P spawns four porters in total and they all start attacking the boss at the same time, whereas Lola spaces herself perfectly so that she can get max damage from her ego while also dealing a lot of damage herself. Unfortunately, she loses to Mr. P by less than 500 damage, so Mr. P moves on. Next, we have Ems versus Max. Now, Ems' bad karma star power adds a ton of damage to each of her attacks since they hit three times each. Max is unable to even unload her attacks in time and gets no help from her super or gadget, so Ems actually moves on. Next is Jesse versus Bonnie. While Jessie uses her recoil spring gadget, she's able to unload all three of her shots, which adds up to 7,500 damage. Bonnie doesn't deal quite that much, but she does get close by landing on the boss with her super and unloading most of her shots. Either way though, Jessie moves on. Next is El Primo versus Nani. Nani has to perfectly time her super to get as much extra damage as possible from her super, and then only has time for one attack after it explodes, but each attack is really strong. In fact, she's able to beat El Primo and move on to the next round. And finally, we have Stu versus Penny. Penny places her salty barrel gadget right next to the boss so that each of her attacks deal over 5,000 damage. Just one of Penny's attacks is enough to beat Stu's total score, so Stu unfortunately gets eliminated and Penny moves on the next round. Half the brawlers were eliminated in round one and we are down to 32 remaining contestants, but only 16 of them will make it past the splash test. In the splash test, brawlers are allowed one super and any other ability that they have to break 16 boxes as fast as they possibly can. Whichever brawler can clear the boxes sooner will move on to the next round. First up is Shelly versus Dynamite. Now, Shelly can only use one super, so after damaging most of the boxes, it actually takes her quite a while to break the 
the rest of them, whereas Dynamike breaks several boxes with his regular attack and quickly breaks the rest of them with his super and is able to move on. Next, we have Surge versus Frank, and this gets over very quickly. Surge can only hit a few boxes at a time, whereas Frank can hit all of the boxes and break them open with three quick attacks and moves on to the round two. Next, we have Bo versus Griff. Both Bo and Griff deal damage to a lot of boxes with their supers, but Bo's attack explodes on impact, whereas Griff's does not. Bo is able to break the boxes just a few seconds faster than Griff and is able to move on thanks to his splash damage. Next is Battle of the Legendaries, Meg versus Crow. And even though I didn't let Meg start this test in her mecha, she still beats Crow by a long shot since she can take out all of the boxes with just two of her supers. So Crow gets eliminated and Meg moves on to the next round. Next is Terra versus Grom and both of them have attacks and supers that pierce through any amount of targets. But since Grom's attacks are simply stronger than Terra's, he finishes first and moves on. Next we have Rico versus Chester and this is also pretty close. Chester and Rico use their super to deal a lot of damage to most of the boxes, but Chester's attack only deals a lot of damage every few attacks, whereas Rico's attack is much more consistent and allows him to take out the boxes just a few seconds before Chester does, and Rico moves on to round three. Up next is Byron versus Edgar. Edgar can pierce through over half the boxes with his attack, so it only takes him a few more hits to break open the rest of them, whereas Byron's star power and super do help deal damage over multiple boxes at a time, but he still gets beat pretty badly by Edgar, and Edgar moves on. Next is Spike versus Fang, and Spike's attack, super, and gadget can all hit multiple boxes at the same time, whereas Fang's attack and super can only hit one box at a time. So uh, Spike easily moves on to the next round once again. Next is Bull versus Gus. Gus can only hit one box at a time, and he can't create ghosts by hitting them, so this takes forever. On the other side, you have Bull who breaks open boxes one at a time as well, but he does a lot more damage with each attack, and he has a faster reload speed. It still takes him 34 seconds to clear all the boxes, but he moves on to round three. Next, we have Piper versus Colette, and Colette starts off pretty slow, but she does break the last several boxes with one quick super. Whereas Piper has to move back and forth between collecting power cubes and going far away so that she can maximize damage from her attacks, neither of them are particularly quick, but Piper takes much longer than Colette does, so Colette gets to move on to round three. Next is Mandy versus Gray, and this comes very close. Gray has to collect enough power cubes so that by the time his third gadget lands, all of the boxes are broken. Whereas Mandy also needs to collect enough power cubes so that her super can break the rest of the boxes open all at once. Mandy barely beats Gray by just over one second and is able to move on to round three. Next is BB versus Russ, and this ends quickly. BB's attack can clear all of the boxes in just four quick attacks, whereas Ruffs can't use his gadget, and his attacks don't pierce, so BB easily moves on to the next round. Next is Squeak versus Tick, and Tick's super won't blow up on the boxes, but his gadget does help him deal a good amount of damage to most of the boxes all at the same time. However, Squeak can hit all the boxes at the same time, and his attacks just deal more damage than Tick's do, so Squeak ends up moving on to round three. Next is Eve versus Mr. P, and neither of their hatchlings or porters will actually target the boxes at all, so both their supers are completely useless in this test. Mr. P does complete this test way faster than Eve since his main attack does explode and hits multiple boxes, whereas Eve's does not. So Mr. P moves on to round three. Next is Ems versus Jesse, and Ems can hit almost every box with every single attack, whereas Jesse can only hit like a few, right? Plus every time her attack does land, it weakens the more that it bounces. So Ems beats Jesse by about 35 seconds and moves on to the next round. And finally, we have Nani versus Penny. Penny replaces her salt barrel on the very corner box and the coins from her attack spread out through all of the boxes. Whereas you have Nani who can't hit more than three boxes at a time with her attacks, at least not easily, so Nani is very quickly eliminated by Penny, and Penny moves on to round three. And now that round three is over, only 16 brawlers remain, and they're all gonna compete in an old-fashioned race. Brawlers can use one super and any other abilities that they might have to race from one side of the map to the next, and whichever brawler reaches the end faster will move on to the next round. First is Dynamite versus Frank. Dynamite walks slower than Frank does, but Dynamite gets a head start with his Dyna Jump star power, and he gets a speed boost while using his fidget spinner gadget. It's like the only time that gadget's useful is in these Olympics. Frank doesn't have anything to make him faster other than his fast movement speed, so Dynamite moves on. Next is Bo versus Meg, and neither of them have anything that helped them in this test, but Meg does have a faster movement speed than Bo as long as she's out of her mecha. So Meg actually does move on to the next round. Next we have Grom versus Rico, and they both have star powers that increase their movement speed, so I wanted to let both of them use theirs. Since Rico's star power makes him much faster, Grom is eliminated and Rico moves on. Next is Edgar versus Spike, and not only does Edgar have a very fast movement speed, but his super gives him a head start and a speed boost. Spike has literally nothing to help him in this test, so Edgar moves on. Next we got Bull versus Colette, and Bull has a faster movement speed than Colette and also gets a head start with his super. However, all that matters is who finishes first, and once Colette gets 
close enough. She uses her super to cross the finish line three tenths of a second faster than Bolt does. So Colette actually moves on to the next round. Next is Mandy versus BB, which is an easy win for BB. BB already has a faster movement speed than Mandy, and she has her home run star power that makes her even faster, whereas Mandy has nothing to help her in this test, which means that BB makes it to round four. Next is Squeak versus Mr. P, and neither of them have anything to help them in this test. They both have the same movement speed as well, so it is a complete tie. I decided to let them settle things in a good old-fashioned way, a good old-fashioned attack spam 1v1. They can both reach each other with their attacks, and since Squeak's attacks take a little bit longer to actually explode, Mr. P defeats him and moves on to the next round. Next is Ems versus Penny, and they also tie in the race test, so they end up facing off against each other in that, once again, attack spam 1v1. Unfortunately, Penny can't kill Ems in three attacks, so she gets eliminated, and Ems moves on to round four. And with only eight brawlers left, they are going to compete in the area test. Each contestant must clear as many skulls as possible. They get points for their attack, their super, and their gadget if it's helpful. Their points are added together, and whichever contestant has the highest score moves on to the final four. First up is Dynamite versus Meg, and Dynamite's attacks do well, so do his super, but his fidget spinner gadget covers an insane area, giving him a total score of 208, whereas Meg gets to use her mecha's attack and super and does pretty good with like 87 points, but Dynamite is the obvious winner. Next is Rico versus Edgar, and similar to Dynamite, Rico's gadget alone covers over five times Edgar's total score. Even just Rico's super is enough to compete against Edgar, so he clearly moves on. Poor Edgar, just really bad at area control. Next is Colette versus BB. Colette gets to use her attack and her super, both of which are actually pretty good. BB's attack is actually not very good, but her super covers way more area than Colette's. In fact, BB almost triples Colette's total score and moves on. Next is Mr. P versus M's. Mr. P can't do anything with his gadget or his super, but his attacks are okay. <laughs> on the flip side, you have M's, whose super can break over 100 skulls by itself. Plus, you have her main attack and her gadget, and Mr. P doesn't even come close to M's, so M's gets to move on to the final four. We are now down to only Dynamite, Rico, BB, and M's, and these brawlers have proven themselves to be great in a lot of different ways, but now they have to try to survive for as long as possible against the sniper bot in the training area. They can heal themselves, they can shield themselves, but they cannot dodge or avoid the sniper shots. Whoever survives the longest moves into the finals. First is Rico versus Dynamite. Dynamite has a little bit more health than Rico does, but since Dynamite doesn't have any ability that can heal or shield himself, then Rico gets to move on to the next round thanks to his healing gadget. And of course, BB versus Ems. Ems is super heals her for a few seconds, but BB has more health and a shield and a gadget that can heal herself as well. So BB survives quite a bit longer and moves on to the final round. And it all comes down to Rico and BB. They've proven their burst damage in the one second DPS test. They've proven to be good against multiple enemies in the splash test. They've even proven to be fast on their feet in the race test. They've even proven themselves in the area test and the survival test. And now they're going to compete in the ultimate test of damage, the boss test. This takes their attack damage, their super damage, their reload speed, and their supercharge rate all into consideration to see which brawler is the ultimate damage dealer. And of course, which brawler is the ultimate brawler overall. As we saw earlier, BB can defeat the boss in a matter of seconds once he's between two walls, but it does take her quite a bit of time to actually get the boss there. Whereas Rico starts using with his gadget, his attack, he starts chaining his super over and over and over again until the boss is actually defeated. In the end, BB's able to take out the boss in 23 seconds, whereas Rico's able to do so in just 20. Plus, he ends the match with two gadgets to spare. And with that, you might say that Rico is the ultimate brawler. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed this video as much as I did making it. Honestly, when I started, I had no idea who was going to win overall, but I probably would not have guessed Rico or BB, actually. <laughs> I'm curious to know who you thought would take the championship, so let me know in the comment section below. Subscribe for future awesome content and check out this awesome content already made right here. For now, this is Kairos Time ticking by and we will see you in Brawl Stars.